Chris, uh, yeah, come. I was going, you know, going back a, a couple of months, and it was time to, you know, submit our presentations for PyCon AU. And I talked to a few people about, you know, maybe what I could do. And they said I should should do a presentation on sprinting. I thought, well, that's a bit weird, but you know, look, all right, we'll see if it gets up. Um, so I looked at some of the prior presentations that have been given at, at PyCon AU, and I discovered there were a lot of cat. So I thought, okay, right, cats and sprinting, and you know, I ran this past a few people, and, and they were they were, you know, pretty all right with it. So I thought, well, okay, so people are going to want to know how to sprint. You know, one of the first things you want to know if you want to be introduced to sprinting is how to do it. So I thought, we better talk to you about the equipment. And then th at this point, they said, hang on, I think I think you've got it wrong. I think you don't need need shoes to sprint. Uh, I think what you really need is a computer if you want to sprint. <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, this one appears to be, you know, reasonably reasonably portable. But then, then I realised I, I had the wrong idea entirely, and I, I went and looked up what, what they were really talking about. So, you know, let's, let's look at what sprinting is in this context. It turns out that it's actually writing code and documentation and tests and contributing to open source and solving problems and all sorts of things that I, I, I enjoy doing with my spare time. So I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. I, I didn't realise that there was such, such a form of sprinting. Now, I'm sure that, that all of you are, uh, are well ahead of me in, in understanding what, the, what this concept is, but uh, many people may be uh, pondering whether the whether they would like to consider sprinting in future, either at this conference or in future conferences. And people who are running sprints may benefit from uh, some kind of basic guidelines on just how to smooth the process out a little bit. Uh, and people who, who are actually uh, here to take part for the first time uh, could benefit from just a little bit of a roadmap. So let's have a look at what sprints look like so that you know what you're in for. Well, this is the fast track. This isn't too terrifying. You sit around, there are tables and collaborative workspaces, and you have the opportunity uh, to talk with people as much as you like. Um, or there's also the slow track. You can just sit around, be, sem be, be a bit more independent, and, and take a more casual approach to the next couple of days. So it's a, it's a very safe working environment. It's more informal. There's uh, a, a little less hierarchy going on. Um, but you, you do your own work as, as a part of a group on an open source project. So how do you start? So the starting line is that, well, you, you want to join a sprint is, is typically what you would do. Some people will, will lead a sprint and they will be there and indicate uh, that they're available to coach you for a, a sprint and be able to give you some directions. Um, so you can, you can do that in a number of different ways. You can, there's usually a whiteboard or other, other board in the room that you can, you can put up there. Emails in advance are very helpful. Labeling your table as clearly uh, welcoming a, a, of new members so that they know that they can come up and what project you're working on can be very helpful. And adding your project to the wiki is something that you might like to consider doing. You are also more than welcome to do individual work and either collaborate uh, on an open source project uh, yourself with international partners, just work on a personal project. It's, it's a very uh, relaxed approach. There are some useful things to know. You should know where the sprint venue is. I don't know where the sprint venue is. Chris, where is the sprint venue? I'm right behind you. Right behind me. So the sprint venue is, is just here, <laughs> and, and it's going to be very small. So a long line, I think, will be the appropriate thing. In the ballroom. Oh, where, where food was served. There you go. You, you see why it took me a while to bring this, this presentation together. Um, OK, so we've identified the venue. You need to know how to use forks and branches. Uh, that, that's generally very helpful, one of the, the, the fundamental mechanism if you want to make a change. I, I would generally recommend uh, beginning with uh, uh, creating a new branch for your work. That's a, it's a good tip. Uh, some knowledge of automated testing is beneficial. You may find the project you're collaborating on lacks that knowledge, in which case you can helpfully bring it to that team. Um, but it's something that, that I would recommend, getting a you know, bit of a start, you know, do a bit of searching ahead of time, see how you could use it yourself. Uh, GitHub is uh, the tool du jour to the extent that it is more or less ubiquitous. Um, so that means that probably you're already familiar with it, but also uh, you're definitely going to have to contend with it. And the other great advantage is knowing when, when to take a break as well. There are some people that you might meet. You might, might fit in with an experienced team. Uh, you might find a growing community of people. It's a very social activity. Uh, if you can find uh, someone on an experienced team who's happy to, to function as a coach, I propose that you latch onto them, don't let them go, and, and generally, generally just uh, hover in their general surroundings because they will uh, lift you up to the next level. Uh, there may be some newbies. You should be, be helpful to these people because they always form 
your next round of uh, minions, I mean <coughs> community members. Uh, and th there are some leaders. So a, le a leader to me is separate from a coach, where a coach will have like particular skills around helping the contributors uh, maximise their, their experience and contribute and be, be a part of the community. The leader may be the person with the technical vision, and they're not always going to be the, the same person, although often they are. You might find the odd guru who is neither a terribly effective leader nor coach, but knows all of the things. Uh, so a approach them with a, an appropriate amount of uh, care, respect, and uh, self-preservation, but I encourage you to, to get into it. And, and you may find a few people who are simply unattached, wandering lost through the sprints, wondering what to do. Project leaders, this is your opportunity. You should find them and hoover them up, and the faster you are at that, the better your project uh, will go. So how do you run a sprint? Well, there are a few different ways to run a sprint. You've got to take a look at your goals. Um, I've run one sprint, but that sprint went really well, and there were a few specific things that I did that made it go a lot better. One is, is that I made it really clear that people were welcome to arrive and join the table at any time during the sprints. So that assisted greatly because people who came in after a break or came in from another project clearly knew that they were welcome to sit down and would be supported into joining the team. So there was, that, that, that was addressing the kind of the, the leaky pipeline of people, whether they want to move from one sprint for another or, or come in or not. You should think about what your goals are. Do you have a specific technical goal in mind? You want to get X done? Or are you mainly focused on building your community? Uh, there's, or do you even just, do you have an itch to scratch? Do you need to sell other people on the benefits of your work? Do you need to come up with some kind of architectural plan to explain clearly what people are going to attempt to achieve? Or do you mostly just want to concentrate on building a human connection with someone? Get to know someone personally who maybe you work with already but is from a different state or a different location. Providing clear instructions. By clear instructions, I don't mean restrictive conditions. I mean things like these are the tools you're going to be working with, these are the set of URLs to the GitLab and the Travis CI and all of the, and the documentation and the things that you're going to be work with, working with. You don't necessarily have to do that in advance, but having something so that you don't have to repeat that excessively and assist, uh, will, will help you save time, and also assist people who need to look things up from reference a little down the, down the track. Uh, decide your role. Are you going to be the coach, the developer, a leader, a peer, a hacker? If you, want to, if you want to be a part of a sprint and you have a project, but you're not really so confident on whether you uh, can function in a, in, in a uh, strong leadership capacity, but you'd still like to work with other people, well, that's completely fine. All you need to do is explain to the other people, hey, I've got this problem that I'm working on. I don't necessarily have the, the perfect way forward identified, but why don't you come and help me? You know, we'll put our minds together and see if we can crack this one together. There, there's no expectation that if you are running a sprint that you must be responsible for its success, and there's no expectation that if you're contributing to an uh, a sprint that you shouldn't have uh, an, an equal voice um, on the team, you know, commensurate with what you've got to add to the conversation. I would recommend uh, taking charge of inductions and introductions as a sprint leader. Introduce the people on your table to each other so that they uh, know each other's names, potentially know the roles that they're going to take within, within your sprint. If you can identify projects or useful, useful tasks for new developers, that can be very helpful. Uh, bug report, addressing specific bug reports or documentation tasks, having a decent queue of these, even if you already know how to solve them, the main goal might be assisting someone else in learning how to solve them, and then that person will be more effective in contributing back to your community in future. You don't have to take that approach. Another approach is to say, we are going to get three people who know how to get the job done to work as a specific team on a specific task. That is also completely fine. It's just a, a, a matter, matter of taste and preference, really. I would suggest to use um, some tools to assist with the process. GitHub, obviously. Uh, three other tools that people may not all use, even though many will be uh, familiar with, is uh, Trello, Travis, and Lumio. Travis is a good work, uh, sorry, Trello, <laughs> mashing them together there. Trello is a really good workflow tool. It's very simple to use, it's really easy to invite people to and sign up, and you can create task cards that you can, you can move around and assign people to. It's a reasonably good way of uh, tracking the activity of up to, say, 
you know, five or ten people in terms of identifying their priorities and you can throw it together in five minutes um, and then that can help uh, reduce collisions or the risk of, of people working in two similar areas. Um, Travis is an automated test and integration tool that will suck down your GitHub open source code and run it in a virtual environment for you on the internet. So that will also track things like uh, uh, merge requests on GitHub and branch commits and, and fork commits. So it's something you can use as a project leader to identify if someone's working on a branch but struggling and, and committing breaking code. You can identify that before they're trying to get it back onto your repository. It also gives you a good picture of what the people on your, on your project might be doing. Um, as an individual developer, you can uh, set that up on a fork of a main project. You don't need anyone's permission or privileges, you can, you can um, add, add the little you know, Travis config file and set that up pretty straightforwardly. It's something I did on a project recently where I'm contributing unit tests. I don't actually know how to do what they do, but I know how to go from no unit tests to some unit tests. And I've been helping them and I put Travis on my fork because they weren't ready to, to go through a continuous integration path. But I was able to use it to, to track and guarantee the, the level of compliance. And when I pull things down from their, the upstream branch, I'm also able to pick up any issues that have been introduced by their commits and send weaselly little emails back to the package maintainer, who appears to be, have a very thick skin, ignore completely the fact they haven't set it up and kindly just fixes them in two seconds because they're a guru. I would uh, uh, look, considering Lumio may be something for larger projects or things that actually do have a bit of decision making to be made, essentially you create a, a Lumio issue for any kind of decision or discussion that needs to be had, allows you know, voting and discussion, and discussion and recording of outcomes and that can be another reasonable collaborative tool. And document your progress. Be inspirational. If you, uh, if you want to uh, gain, gain a little bit of air time and a little bit of visibility, uh, publishing a blog saying, we conducted a sprint at PyCon AU, there were certain, a certain number of attendees, we were able to assist with a certain number of tasks, uh, can help give your project a bit of visibility, gives PyCon AU some visibility, uh, documents the work that was done, and I think that would be a, a good bit of social glue as well. So you'll all be pleased to know this is a very short presentation because there's not a lot more to it than that. Um, I'm going to... Uh, spend a little bit of time now just maybe introducing some of the sprints that, that might come up. Um, I only actually know of one, so Perhaps I will do that. Invite all the people who want exactly. to, yes. to come and speak into that microphone. Or Indeed. Microphone. Yes. So if those people who are comfortable to uh, announce their sprints could come up to this microphone, that would be wonderful. <laughs> the one that I know of who's, who ahead of time was able to provide me uh, with a slide, um, gets to have all of the visual space. So I might put uh, Russell up first so that he can talk to his slide and then I'll, I'll, so I'll hand over now to those people and then once that's finished, we'll go through any dis audience discussions. Sure. So fire away, okay, Russell. Okay. Cool. Hello. Okay, so um, hi, I'm Russell. You may have seen me a couple of times. You may have seen me here a couple of times. Um, so I will be obviously sprinting on Django uh, or, or Django is one of the things I'll be sprinting on. That means, uh, trying out new patches, trying out new bugs, testing new features, trying to find bugs in new features, even things as simple as if you have a work project where you are using Django, try upgrading to trunk Django and see what breaks. That's incredibly useful information for us. So anyway, if, uh, my, my personal goal, what I set up there on, on the slide that I sent, uh, sent 10, is that my, my personal goal at Sprints is to get absolutely nothing done myself. Um, my goal is to help everyone else and make them as productive as possible. It is an entirely achievable goal for anyone who attends a Sprint, and well, anyone who attends a Django Sprint anyway, to be, a, be in the committers file by the end of the Sprint or very soon after if, once, once the patch has had a chance to be reviewed. It's entirely achievable. So, you know, if you're interested in working on Django, either to contribute to Django, or we also have a number of community projects around the outside of that. So, pe websites we need people to build, or additions to add to Django's own website that we need people to build. So, uh, I'm also uh, going to be sprinting on uh, uh, all sorts of Toga and Python, Python mobile related stuff. So, if you want to see me about those, I'm also be sprinting, and I, I need minions. I need many minions. I need millions of minions. Uh, so, here's a minion market. Yes. Yeah, the minion marketplace is heating up. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm Robert Collins, and I echo everything Russell said about the sort of way to approach a sprint. The projects I'm going to be helping folk contribute to is going to be Python itself, 
Um, there's a bunch of unit test stuff that needs some extra love. Um, OpenStack is a project a few people have heard of, and there's a whole bunch of folk here who know OpenStack and will be either doing their own things or helping people do things on them. And uh, obviously PIP, which I've done two talks about this weekend because it's a very target-rich environment, and anyone who wants to get involved, I will happily help you become a committer. Hello, my name. Oh, hello, my name is Tyson. Um, I uh, attended the Django Core Team impromptu talk on Friday, and we discussed something called Django Stables, which is essentially the idea to bring testing to the massive Django projects that are out there and formalize the process so that when a new thing gets rolled into Django Trunk, that your project can be tested against that and that Django uh, core devs have essentially a dashboard that they can see, oh, hang on, we just went and broke um, Django REST framework with this patch, and that then is you know, part of the cycle. But it means that your projects can be first-class citizens on that testing framework too. You go and put your own tests in and such, and all of a sudden, you know, the core team will start sort of knocking on your door at some point saying, hey, we noticed that this broke your system, and um, yeah, we're on it. Come and see me. I was intending on doing that, actually. Um, hello, my name is Josh, for those who don't know me. Uh, I've got a number of different projects I'm going to be working on during Monday, Tuesday. I'd love some help if people are keen. Uh, for example, I'll be working on OpenStack and happy to help people get started with their first patch if they're interested, uh, as well as the Zool gating system, which I gave a talk about yesterday. I'm also doing a bunch of Linux Australia things. Uh, we're going to possibly burn or try and fix Zookeeper um, a little bit, which runs this conference, uh, along with our membership database. Hopefully we get some few people to help work on that. Uh, and also the organisation has a lot of other tasks too that aren't necessarily code related. So if you think that you would be interested in helping write some documentation or updating our website or working on our membership mailing lists or things like that, would love some help and input, please find me. Happy to get to know you. Love your help. Hi, I'm Tim from the Too Many Projects. Um, <laughs> I'd obviously love help with any of those projects, uh, but one thing I wanted to um, specifically highlight is I'll be working on a bunch of hardware stuff tomorrow. So if you want to play with things that have, you know, physical blinking lights, um, I'll probably have six or seven different um, development boards um, there tomorrow and um, we can actually do some cool stuff that um, has real-world interfaces. So if you're interested in playing with hardware um, and interested in learning how to use Python for doing hardware stuff and want to help contribute, um, I'd absolutely love to have your help on that. Okay, thanks everyone. I'll just add two final remarks before questions. Uh, one is is that uh, my view of the sprints and the reason that I attend uh, each year is because working with the, the kind of people who tend to uh, lead sprints at PyCon AU represents uh, a training opportunity second to none uh, to, to learn the way that other people develop and uh, from, from some of the masters. So I think it can be easily sold to workplaces, should that be a factor for you in terms of uh, obtaining some funding. Going on a two-day training course will cost you uh, a lot more than attending two days of sprints at five bucks a day. Um, I myself am not uh, particularly planning to, to lead a sprint, so I'm in the unattached category at the moment. Um, but if there is a, a, a reasonable um, cohort of, of uh, new new developers at the day uh, on the day, where you find that maybe those projects that are outlined feel like you feel like the uh, learning curve's too steep or for some other reason just aren't for you. I have no shortage of mad science plans uh, that I can turn into activities, and I'd be more than happy to run in that direction if that's something that's uh, called for on the day. Um, but that's enough about me. Any more questions from the audience? Uh, I don't have a question, but if Nick Coglin could like get on deck on that lectern, that would be fantastic. That'll get the lightning talk started really quickly once this finishes. But questions over to this stand here, if you've got any. <coughs> All right. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like it. All right. Thank you, everybody.